So we're going to sit you, this broker right here. Are we good, guys? That's good. That's good. Uh, let's roll the cameras. Roll the sound. Cameras rolling. Rolling. We're all set. Okay? Okay. One national television network stood above the rest. No one covered the crisis better than NBC's nightly news and dateline. NBC positioned reporting teams in New Orleans well ahead of the storm. Day by day, they stayed with the story and reported the devastation, the dislocation, and government ineptitude with intelligence and humanity. I was not long out of the anchor chair. I was in Montana, and I saw on the Weather Channel this huge, huge hurricane headed for New Orleans. And old instincts kicked in, and I called, and I said, are we okay? And they said, Brian's on his way. And I thought, this is going to be his first big, big story, because it's domestic, it's a hurricane, it's New Orleans. And it was not your first big story alone, but it was the story that I think elevated you to your own level. You took ownership, if you will, of the anchor chair at that time. But you could not have been aware of that when you were en route to New Orleans. No, I, I was not, and you're very kind. I remember because nothing was flying. We had to charter an aircraft from New York, and en route we made the decision to go to Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge, our first stop was the Price Club. We needed we knew this was a this was like a large canker sore on the weather map. This had a, a deep red purple center as it came across the Gulf, and we knew that uh, dire predictions would come true. We had all the stuff. I brought my old fire boots, which go up to mid hip, which came in sadly very handy. We needed fresh water and food and supplies. And my goal was to get to the Superdome because that was being called the shelter of last resort in the city of New Orleans. We were among the first allowed in. They closed the corrugated steel door. To have experienced that with all those people, um, to have experienced that first night, uh, a grim, horrible situation. You and I have covered wars and we've covered the depth of human behavior, and this was the latter. We watched, uh, all of us watched as one man committed suicide. We saw people, families, old people clinging onto their dignity with no food, water, working toilet facilities, and that was just the start. We emerged thinking, as I put it on the air, New Orleans had dodged a bullet. The waters hadn't risen. The streets were dry with a lot of blown out windows. Later, of course, uh, thanks to some engineering failures and the waters from Lake Pontchartrain, uh, we had a cataclysmic disaster that went on for days, aided and abetted uh, by a kind of, to coin a phrase, benign neglect on the part of our national uh, officials. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen George W. Bush as angry as when I asked him a few months later, if this had been Nantucket or Dallas or Chicago or New York, would the response have been the same? Uh, so yes, we had some superb producers and camera crews. My week, uh, two weeks there was not helped by the fact that I accidentally ingested some of the flood water. I became very sick with dysentery. Our hotel was overrun with gangs. I was rescued in the stairwell of a five-star hotel in New Orleans by a young police officer. We are friends to this day. And uh, it just was, uh, it was, uh, I look back at, at total ag agony. We were we were experiencing the least of it. We were able eventually to get supplies. Uh, but in a city where uh, uh, having tires with air in them, having fresh water, having some kind of canned food was the coin of the realm. That's how you were going to survive this. This was uh, among the worst periods in any, especially this great American city in recent memory.